in Toronto at the Minds and Money event. We're with David Stein, uh, Managing Director at Aracura Capital. David, thank you for being with us on Small Cap Power. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So let's discuss, uh, before we get started on um, uh, one of the main themes here at the conference, let's talk about you because you have been in the industry since 2001, mm -hmm. but what are your key successes? So um, I started uh, early in the industry uh, after do, after you know being educated as a geologist and engineer, and but I started covering small caps right away uh, for uh, Sprott Securities actually, which is now Cormark, and really uh, you know got to uh, learn and enjoy uh, picking companies, picking small companies, uh, seeing what you know what various companies what made them special mm -hmm. what made their you know their returns exceed the others uh, then I got into the asset management side of the business in 2009 which was with Aberdeen um, which is an investment holding company and I ran that company for uh, a while as well and then now recently I um, have uh, started Eric here capital right. to focus more on the private equity side as those companies transition you know into small caps or right. or, or sell them mm -hmm. now when I look at your description online it says mm -hmm. that you're known as an innovative stock picker how and what does that mean so when I was at uh, Cormark you know one of the things I really tried to do was find um, find small cap stocks mm -hmm. that were undercovered or not covered at all and and really I looked for um, I looked for growth at a reasonable price Garth. which is something that you often don't find in small caps and mining um, you know depending on what part of the cycle we're in so uh, so and it's not just growth in profits but also growth in resource growth in maybe growth in production mm -hmm. so I really looked for companies that were growing all aspects of their business but you could buy them really cheaply and I felt like that when you can do that your downside is protected but you know your upside is almost unlimited right. so it's a great trade well is there an example of a company that that uh, you had success with in the past I probably covered more than 50 companies in my career um, as an analyst but you know one that I remember very distinctly was Redback early on I was one of if not the first analyst to cover it uh, back in 2006 they had the Chirano mine um, you know the company was undervalued just based on Chirano alone and then they bought Tassiest uh, and the story got even better so you know from a company that that had a really strong growth profile um, you know on the exploration side what I really looked for was what I call low-hanging fruit so mm -hmm. where the company doesn't need to take big risks to add resources um, it's really kind of obvious where to drill and how much you're gonna get and they had that and um, you know as 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 you you know it, it became a huge success right. later on right now let's move on to talk about capital and discipline which mm -hmm. is actually a theme here that um, is going to be discussed um, what is your viewpoint on that and what can you share with our audience um, give us your insight well there's no question that towards the the last few years of the last mining cycle which in my opinion ended in early 2011 it was just extremely easy to get capital and so it was very easy for companies to um, overspend uh, and make really poor decisions from an IRR point of view uh -huh. um, just to justify the market's need for for growth not at a reasonable price but growth at any cost and that was what was happening um, you know the taps have dried up severely since then so I think uh, although there's certainly been you know some questionable deals in the last five years um, it's much less so now uh, and that's simply because the market doesn't let companies do that anymore for the most part the capital both on the debt and equity side just simply isn't there to build you know multi-billion dollar mines mm -hmm. or to take over companies at a high cost mm -hmm. etc so um, so there is there is some more discipline now um, you know it can, it can always be better though Right. Well, you, you've just basically said a few of my next um, points mm -hmm. for, for my next question, but what's yeah. your overview of the current market? We went through a very tough five years um, from, uh, from 11 to 16. So there's no question that we have, we're rebounding from that. You know, when I look at the fundamentals across all metals, I think they're better than they were in the beginning of January of 2016, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but certainly not, um, you know, not into the stratosphere in terms of in terms of uh, you know where um, where metal prices are, I think that you know I think for the most part it's been reflected based on the current fundamentals. So 
you know, we'll have to see what happens with growth in global growth, growth in China, et cetera, over the next few years to see whether or not um, there's a, the, the metal prices have any further to go. And again, I'm talking on aggregate. Um, lots of individual metals have different fundamentals. Um, you know, obviously the specialty metals and the electric car metals have been a huge focus in the market sure. the last few years, but at the end of the day, they, they represent a very, very slim part of the right. sector. Um, maybe a few single digit, per, you know, single digit percent. So, um, you know, when you look at copper and iron ore and, you know, zinc and gold, um, you know, it's better than it was, but I'm still, I'm still, you know, sort of, um, I guess, moderate on it. Um, I, I still think there's some really good opportunities, really cheap companies out right. there that I'm finding. And uh, well, do you, you have know, a, do you have a metal at this time that you prefer over others? You know what? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I, I'm kind of metal agnostic, so hmm. I don't like to chase metals when they're going, you know, crazy on the upside. Um, I like to buy uh, companies or mines that where they're going to make money at current metal prices. If metal prices go up, I treat that more like a bonus. Mm, got it. Uh, okay. And but my investment decision is based on the current price deck, and you know that's. Um, you know, for, for good companies that can produce at a low cost, there's plenty of room for margin right now right. in pretty much any metal. Great. Well, thank you so much for your insight today, David. Thank you. Thank you.